And welcome to our last lesson in our chapter 7, Systems Learning Equations. We're going to look at 7.6, Properties of Learning Equations. So, so far we've been looking at equations or systems that have exactly one solution. So there's only one value of x and one value of y that is going to satisfy both equations. What you might have noticed is that these systems have a different slope and a different y-intercept. So we need to be able to identify how many solutions each system has. If we've got one solution, then we've got different slopes and different y-intercepts. Sometimes we're going to find that there are no solutions to our graph, to our systems. If you were to graph these ones, these lines would never, ever, ever touch. There is no value of x and no value of y that satisfy both. Now, if we graph two lines and they never, ever touch, never, ever cross, we call them parallel lines. So you think, how do we get parallel lines on a graph? Well, they have to have the same slope because they can never touch, but they need different y-intercepts. So if you've got a same slope for a different y-intercept, you've got a parallel line. Parallel lines have no solutions. And sometimes we've got infinite solutions. We've got more than one, more than two, more than three. There's a whole bunch that work. Well, if you were to graph these two, lines on top of on a graph they would literally be on top of one another so if you've got an infinite number of solutions the two lines are on top of one another and because they're on top of one another they have to be the exact same line so they would have the same slope and the same y-intercept so today we're going to look at systems and we're going to ask ourselves how many solutions do these have is there only one is there no solution or is there an infinite number of solutions? In order to do that, I've made a nice little summary chart here for you. So if we've got one solution, we're looking at the slopes. They'll be different and the y-intercepts will be different. If there's no solution, we'll have the same slopes but different y-intercepts. And if there's infinite, if they're the same line, there'll be same slope at same y-intercept. So basically, you have to look at the system and find the slopes, identify are same or different, and look at the y-intercepts. Are they the same or different? So if you need slope and y-intercept, you're going to get every one of your equations into the form of y equals mx plus b. We looked at this in chapter 6, slope-intercept form. We know the number in front of our x, our slope. Now, we've got to watch your signs here. You know, plus and minuses are different slopes. And the constant by itself at the end is our y-intercept. So let's look at our first example here. How many solutions does the following system have? So we're looking for one solution, no solution, or infinite solutions. So we've got 3x plus y equals negative 27, and y equals negative 9 minus x. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in the right form. y equals mx plus b. So I start with 3x plus 3y equals negative 27. So I need the y by itself on the left, so I'll bring the 3x over. So I've got 3y equals negative 3x minus 27. And then I have to have the y with a 1 coefficient. Right now I've got 3 as a coefficient. So I'm going to divide everything by 3. Leaves me with y equals negative 1x minus 9. Okay, so I know my slope here is negative 1. My y-intercept is negative 9. 
Let's do the same thing to the second equation. y equals negative 9 minus x. So my y is already by itself. It's already got a one coefficient, so that's pretty good. But to keep my form, I'm going to bring my x and my constant and switch them. So y equals negative x minus 9. And I've got my x and my constant in this proper spot. What I'm going to do to make my point a little more clear is I'm going to actually write down a 1 here. Now we know that when you don't see a 1 there, you have to assume it is. So there's nothing in front of the x, you assume it to be 1. So now I've got y intercept form for both equations. Let's take a look. Slopes, negative 1, negative 1, they're the same. Y intercepts, negative 9, negative 9, they're the same. So my slope is the same. Y-intercept is the same. Oops, I'll spell that word right there, sorry. So if I've got the same slope, same slope, and same Y-intercept right here. So same slope, same Y-intercept, I've got an infinite number of solutions. They are the exact same line. They would graph right on top of each other. And so there are a whole bunch of x and y values that would work. OK, let's flip our page. Let's create a system of linear equations that has no solution. OK, well, right away, no solution. Go back to my chart here, and a no solution will have the same slope, but a different y-intercept. So same slope, but a different y-intercept. And I'm going to express these in standard form. Okay, think back to last unit. What is standard form? Standard form, if you remember, is ax plus by equals c. Now I have some restrictions on my a, can't be a negative. I have restrictions a, b, can't be fractions. So let's start off with same slope, different y-intercept. So again, I'm going to start off with y equals mx plus b. So line number one, y equals, let's just make up a slope. Uh, let's go with 4x, and let's make up a b. Let's go with minus 2. Now to make one that's got no solution, I'm going to have to have the same slope, so my second equation, I'm going to flip to blue here, will be y equals, same slope, so it's got to be 4x, but a different y-intercept, it's got to be something other than negative 2. I've got a lot of options here, I'm just going to go with a negative 4. Okay, so I've made my two equations. They've got the same slope, but different y-intercept. But now to answer my question, I've got to get it in standard form. So I'm going to bring the 4x over to the other side. So this becomes negative 4x plus y equals negative 2. And of course, I've got to make the a positive, so now it's a negative. I'm going to switch the signs of everything. 4x minus y equals 2. Okay there, now let's go to our second equation. Do the same thing. We'll bring the 4x over. So that's negative 4x 
plus y equals negative 4. going to take away the negative, gives me 4x minus y equals positive 4. So I've now meet, met all my requirements. I'm going to have same slope, different y-intercept, in standard form. 4x minus y equals 2. 4x minus y equals 4. Next question. Create a system of linear equations with one solution. OK, what does one solution mean? One solution means that the slope is different. And it means that the y-intercept is different. We already know what standard form is. ax plus by equals c. So let's start writing one out. Let's go with y equals 2 thirds x plus 1. The first equation I'm just making up. I know I need a slope. I know I need a y-intercept. Now the second equation is where I have my restrictions. I got to have a slope that's different, so something other than two thirds, and I got to have a different y-intercept, something other than one. So let's go with y equals I don't know. Let's go a quarter x plus three. Different slope, different y-intercept. This system will have one solution. But of course I gotta get into standard form. So the first thing I do is I bring the x over. So I get negative two thirds x minus y equals one. But of course I don't want a fraction and I don't want a negative number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna times everything in here by negative 3. The negative will take care of the negative in front of the x, and the 3 will take care of the denominator. So negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Positive 6 divided by 3 is 2x. Negative 3 times negative y is positive 3y. I'm sorry to see my mistake here. This was originally supposed to be positive y, which makes my final answer negative 3y. Equals negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Now to the same thing with our second equation. I'm going to bring the 1 quarter x over, so that becomes negative 1 quarter x plus y equals positive 3. And again, I'm going to times this entire equation by negative 4. The negative and negative will make it positive, and the 4 and the 4 will cancel out. That'll leave me with positive x minus 4y equals negative 12. So I've got a different slope, a different y-intercept, both in standard form. So I'm doing pretty good here. Finally, let's look at our last equation, our last system. Infinite solutions. Well, we know that infinite solutions are going to have the same slope and the same y-intercept. And of course, we're still going to do them in standard form. So let's make up one equation. Let's just go with uh, y equals, let's just go with uh, 6x plus 3. And now let's make our second equation. Same slope, same y-intercept. But I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to start off with, say, 2y equals. Well now if I've times this by 2, everything has to be times by 2. 
So this would be 12x plus 6. So before we get going, let's pull out a 2 here to make sure that we've got the exact same uh, equation, same slope, same y-intercept. Pulling out a 2 gives me y equals 6x plus 3. So let's now change it into standard form. Bring the 6 over. Negative 6x plus y equals 3. And the only thing I have to do here is get rid of this negative sign. So we're going to flip everything. 6x minus y equals negative 3. On this side, I'm going to have the 2 coming out. I'm going to bring the 6 over. And then I'm going to take care of that negative sign, which means I've got 6x minus y equals negative 3. And yes, I've got the same slope, same intercept, so I've got the exact same line. Okay, let's go to our textbook. Let's go to page 448. Let's do 2 from the A's, 5 from the B's, and 1 from the C's.